Hi everyone, my name is Karma and I'm the lecturer on performing and production arts. So I'm just here to tell you a little bit about the provisions that we have available for the academic year 2020 to 2021. So this year we actually have two courses available. So we have our level one and our level two in performing and production arts. To give you a little bit of an idea of the course structure, so in level one, we have an introduction to music performance and production arts, uh, and we also have an introduction to the research for music performance and production arts. And then we'll be looking at communicating with an audience, production development for music and performing arts, and performance development, and then that all culminate, uh, culminates at the end in a performing arts project. Um, it's also a music pathway as well, so you can also be looking at music within the level one course. And for the level two, we have um, introduction to performance and also an introduction to production. And um, so performance, obviously, is your singing, dancing, acting skills. And your production is things like prop making, set design, costume, sound and lighting as well. And we'll be looking at communicating with an audience, staging a performance. And we'll be looking at contextual research for your performance and production. And then obviously we're going to explore in more depth your performance and production skills. And there will be an opportunity for personal project presentation. And there's also producing and performing to an audience. So just to give you an idea historically of the different types of performances we've done, because we do a big variety of performances. And we have done musical theatre, so we've done things like Adam's Family, Sweeney Todd, we've done Grease, We Will Rock You, lots of different full scale musical productions. And we do dance platforms, and we've done contemporary theatre, we do classical theatre like Antigone or Romeo and Juliet or Othello, and we've done devised work, which we've done in house and we've also collaborated to do different device pieces outside as well um, and we've also um, done lots of different kind of showcases and things as well so we do lots of really wide and varied different types of performances on the courses um, your entry requirements. So if you're looking at joining us on level one, all you need is just a passion and an interest for the subject. That's fine. Um, for the level two, you do need a minimum of four GCSEs at grade three or above. Um, one of those must be your English and you do have to audition as well. Um, if you're coming onto the level um, two and hoping to then progress onto the level three afterwards, uh, you will need to achieve your level two functional skills whilst doing your level two. Um, performing arts course and because you you would need that as an entry requirement as you move up to the level three and um, we do ask you to audition and your audition can be it's entirely up to you and your choice so you can do a monologue if you're more of an actor or you can sing or you can dance we don't need a huge amount we, you know it can be a minute's worth of material we just need to see you and your skills and just to see you working so it's good practice because we have to audition in our industry um, assessment wise, um, you're assessed in a very similar way in level one and level two. So assessment wise, there's a lot of practical assessment ongoing, looking at your ongoing skills building and also your performances. Um, there's an ongoing reflective and skills development log that you'll be required to and do, which will be tracking your learning and your skills development as you're going and a research log as well. So it's practical assessment as well as some log work. Um, equipment needed. So for level one and level two, uh, you need what we call performance blacks, which is just plain black clothing that's appropriate for um, physical activity. So jogging bottoms, leggings, black t-shirts, that sort of thing is absolutely fine. You need to be able to move. And um, we ask no logos, please, because we like you to be plain and uniformed. Um, no crop tops, like you, we need to be appropriate for physical contact because we're going to be doing physical work. Um, you'll need a water bottle because obviously it's practical work and it can um, get quite intense. Um, we also do lots of vocal work and there are lots of water fountains situated around the college. There's one right close to the theatre as well. So bring a water bottle that you can refill throughout the day. Um, in addition to this, we do class our trips as part of our equipment. So like some courses you may need to go and get academic textbooks well we actually need to see theatre live theatre and we do trips and we have workshops and things coming in so we do include that in your equipment fees so if you are entitled to a bursary you can apply for bursary and that can help to cover some of the costs of external trips and workshops as well. Um, and whilst we're talking about external trips and workshops, um, we really do aim to provide as diverse an um, enrichment 
opportunity as possible. So we have lots and lots of different types of workshops that come in and deliver with us or we go out and do external trips. So just to give you um, an idea of what our level threes who are just leaving have just done on their course and um, we did a performance at Disneyland Paris and we've done two theatre trips to London, we did a tour of the Royal Albert Hall and we did a residential on Dartmoor from a film project and we've had lots of visiting performances in and we hosted the National Youth Theatre auditions this year as well and we've worked closely with Doorstep Arts which are a local Arts Council funded and Battersea Arts Council funded um, drama group that works with the community as well um, they've given us lots of opportunities to perform at Northcott Theatre and also in the Spanish Barn and um, we had a casting agent come in um, that has worked for the television he's done some work around um, children in need and things as well and he was piloting a new show and he actually cast four of our learners to go and work in that pilot TV show and um, we've had all sorts of things we've, we've gone out to pineapple dance studios for workshops and we've had puppetry workshops in pro workshops and um, we also have some of our ex-students who have now moved on, finished drama school and worked professionally in shows. They come back for us and talk a bit about their experience being a student at South Dublin College, their experience at drama school and then do workshops around their specialisms as well. And I think that is always really interesting for our learners because they can see people just like themselves from the local area who have progressed through and done really well and they can ask them lots of questions and it's interesting to see people coming through from different pathways as well. Um, so we have lots of workshops. And um, collaboration, so something that I feel really strongly about and my colleagues feel really strongly about is collaboration. So it's key within the arts to make sure that you network and you make connections to other people in the arts industries. So we try to collaborate as much as we can across the college. So we've um, often collaborated with um, film, media, photography, fashion, makeup, music, art and design, hairdressing on various performances, um, a big multimedia performance that we did, we took over painting cinema, actually we had a very prestigious guest come to watch that in the audience because Prince Edward would come to see our work there as well. And that was across lots of different arts practices all coming together and collaborating to do a performance. And that way all the new developing performers and artists and upcoming art industries they're already making those links and those networks as they move up into their profession and likewise then we have all the external already established professionals that they're also networking and making links with so it's very important to us that we collaborate and then they get to know other people within the college as well in a wider context and um, Destinations and progression opportunities. So if you are coming onto the level one provision, you could then look to um, move on to the level two diploma in performance and production arts, or you can look at moving into the level two, level two diploma in music um, performance and productions. So they're your two options. Um, if you successfully complete your level two and you have your level two in English, um, you can then look at moving up into the level three diploma in performance and production arts um, and there, there's another audition process for that one as well. Um, expectations, so as you're probably aware performing arts is a highly competitive and disciplined industry so we, it's our responsibility to train you to succeed. So our expectations of you is that you will attend all of your sessions on time with appropriate equipment or with your performance blacks and um, I know it should go without saying but just make sure that you come to those classes with your diary and your notebooks and your pens everything that you need and um, secondly really really importantly making sure that you have a professional and respectful working attitude towards lecturers and your peers alike so it's really important that we can provide a really safe and inclusive environment where people are feel comfortable enough to take risks. It's about taking risks, challenging ourselves, performing and, and putting your work forward. So we really want to make sure that we have that lovely, safe, inclusive environment. And of course, number three, um, meeting all your assignment um, and assessment deadlines. So that's paramount, you know, timekeeping is very, very important in performing arts. Um, obviously life happens and if big things happen, there's always extenuating circumstances, but you need to open a clear line of dialogue with your tutors for that. It is very important for you to succeed that you meet your deadlines. 
Um, so our campus and our facilities, so we have our theatre space, which is really versatile, so that's in, in-house, and you can push the seating bank back completely and change the way that you use that space. So we've done theatre in the round in there, we've done transverse theatre before, we've done Romeo and Juliet, we've set it up as cabaret style and had different cabaret style, or we've had promenade um, style where you go around different installations, and we've turned it into... Uh, army barracks and trenches and all sorts of things you can do there or of course you have a seating bank out and have it as an end on um, theatre show as we do if you're doing um, something that lends itself to that sort of genre like musical theatre we often do use the space like that. Um, we have a dance studio which has front floors and the mirrored walls and um, we have the music studio as well. We obviously have our computer suites and we have the uh, learning resources centre as well so it got lots and lots of equipment and the facilities of the college to support your learning. And um, so now I'm just open to questions if anybody does have any questions. Question bars. And just just in case anybody doesn't have questions, a couple of things that quite often come up are um, how many days a week do we come into college? So we're in college for three days of the week. Um, so we're not timetabled over three days. There's an expectation that you'd do an extra, about equivalent of a day's work at home. Um, there is an expectation that you do independent work. And um, sometimes we get asked what's the practical to theory kind of ratio as well. And it kind of looks in, at level two, 80% practical, 20% theory in the timetable, but there is again an expectation that you work at home, so there's probably more balanced. It will be 35% theory and 65% practical um, between the two pieces. So it can be, yeah, a little question. How many students in a class? So the average class, um, obviously every year that changes depending on demographic and how many people want to do performing arts or how many people turn 16 and, and that um, year. You're, we're normally working at between 12 to 20 um, students in the day. Um, a full day, so how long is a full day? So it's a full day and every day. So a full day would normally start at nine and we finish about four. So it's slightly longer than your average kind of school day, but we are in for three days a week. Unless when we go to showtime, we do sometimes ask you to come off timetable. So I know some of you have jobs and things and we give you plenty of notice about that. And then we do additional rehearsals and things as if you've been involved in shows and things before, I'm sure you're aware that sometimes on that run up to production time, it takes a little bit more time to rehearse. And um, I think that's all the questions there. Has anybody else got any questions? Okay, thank you. Hi guys, uh, welcome to the music webinar. My name is Barney and I'm going to talk a little bit about the music course we're offering starting September this year. Uh, oh, let's, so we're offering a level one music and performing and production arts and a level two music performance and production. Uh, level one is more of a general introduction to music and performing arts. Uh, ideal for the beginner who doesn't necessarily play an instrument but has a keen interest to learn about these subjects. Uh, level two is uh, more for people who know they want to do music. Uh, they can play an instrument or they have a keen interest in the studio side of things. The course starts in September, it finishes in May. Um, and the course is designed to give you an understanding, an understanding of music performance and production as a collaborative, a collaborative activity. So lots of working together. Um, <clears throat> Let's have a look at the structure of the courses. OK, so uh, level one, as you can see, we have an introduction to music, performing and production arts, uh, an introduction to the research of that, learning about communicating with an audience, um, production development for music and performing arts. Uh, this is all just a kind of a light introduction to this area, really, if you like. Uh, level two, um, Introduction to music performance, introduction to music production. Uh, we're going to be doing lots of practicing, lots of performing, lots of playing, lots of recording. Uh, we will be having guest speakers for the industry. Uh, you'll be having one on one lessons for your instruments as well. Uh, throughout the course, we'll be looking at all sorts of areas of music. 
um, exploring music composition, whether that's you writing pop songs or maybe looking into writing music for TV and film or media. Uh, we'll be researching into artists and producers, how they've done things in the past, what are their tricks, what are their secrets, uh, and we'll be practicing lots of uh, performance. Okay, let's, okay. <laughs> so here we have Jack and Luke. Uh, this is just a couple of fun photos from the, from the guys from last year's course. Uh, this is when the top photo there, uh, Jack and Luke, this is when we were collaborating with the performing arts guys. These are from the guys last year that took the top one, Jack and Luke, they're having some fun on the congress when we were collaborating with performing arts, uh, playing a Blues Brothers song. Uh, and underneath we have Casey, Ryan and Ben, they're, uh, they were sat around the piano composing a song, which is something that we, we do quite a lot of. Okay, entry requirements. Uh, level one, you just need a passion for the subject. Uh, level two, you need four GCSE, grade three or above, one must be English. It's also preferred for level two that you play at least one instrument and or you sing. Um, if you don't have an instrument and you're coming in because you really want to get into the studio side of things, that's fine, but you will be encouraged to pick up an instrument on the course. Um, even if it's drums, guitar, whatever, you will be encouraged to play something as we go. Uh, assessment. You will be assessed on your practical and academic progression. Uh, there'll be a, a practical assessment, so we'll be constantly looking at how you're improving your practical skills, uh, your performance skills, your writing skills. Uh, you will also be expected to keep a, a weekly blog of your progress. Uh, and you will also have some research tasks where you'll need to present that properly. So there will be some written work as well that you'll be assessed on. Um, equipment needed. The first bit of this, OK, so the, the USB stick. Um, this is going to be essential for you guys because uh, this is where you're going to be storing your work, like your videos of your rehearsals or your vlogs or any recordings that you might make in the studio. Um, for example, you might be working in one studio for a session uh, and then need to go to the Mac suite to carry on with other production ideas. You'll need to be able to transfer your song or your session from one computer to another. And that's that will be done with the USB stick. So it's essential you guys come with a USB stick. Obviously, you'll need your instrument uh, and a jack lead. Um, if you're a drummer, we don't expect you to bring your drums into college every day. We have drum kits available. Um, but please bring the sticks if you are a drummer, because they seem to go missing quite often. Um, on level two, you will, there will be a £50 payment at the beginning, and this will support your one-on-one -on -one lessons that you'll have uh, throughout the year. OK, more fun photos. Uh, this is Ben, one of our guys from last year. He was setting up some mics down at Ocean Studios, uh, ready to record a band. I, uh, I actually run this studio when I'm not at college. Um, it's a great place to come and get some hands on experience working with bands in a professional setting. Um, all students will have the opportunity to come and have some work experience with me down there. Get some real hands on industry stuff. OK, let's have a look at destination and progression opportunities. After successful completion of level one, you can progress on to level two. Uh, after level two, you can progress on to level three, and that's either performing and production arts or music performance and production. Um, it's worth noting uh, that you will be doing uh, maths and English alongside this course, uh, and you will need to pass your, your maths and English uh, level two before you can get onto a level three. Um, as far as progression opportunities are concerned, I mean, after you've done this course, you, you may want to go on to university or you may want to progress into any any area of the industry. Really, there's sound engineering uh, in the studio, there's production, there's being a, a live sound engineer for live bands or working at theatres or gigging. Uh, there's lots of opportunities uh, to go on to after this course. Expectations. Uh, there are many areas of the music industry, all of which are highly competitive. 
You will need commitment and determination to succeed. Ain't that the truth? Uh, this is a very hard industry to get into. Uh, there are lots and lots of people who are very good, all, all competing for the same jobs. So you've, you've got to be really highly driven. Uh, you will be expected to attend all sessions on time with appropriate equipment, have a professional and respectful working attitude towards lecturers and peers alike. This is really, this is really important. Uh, I think it's really important in general in this industry to have uh, a respectful and professional attitude. Uh, a lot of jobs you get are because of your personality, are because of the way you communicate with people. Uh, you need to be good and positive uh, and supportive uh, the whole time. Um, and you will also be expected to meet all the assignment and assessment deadlines, of course. OK, more fun photos performing to the rest of the class. This is some of the guys from last year performing to the rest of the class. As I said, this course is very performance based. We will take as much opportunity to do as much playing, as much performing as possible. Um, so there you go. There's some guys doing that last year. Uh, campus and facilities. Uh, we have a 32 track digital recording studio. We have rehearsal rooms. We have drums, guitars, amps, PA systems, microphones. We have a theatre. We have a max suite where we do a lot of our production work, working on um, using software like Logic, uh, learning how to record and how to produce in the studio. And of course, the, the college has numerous cafes and chill zones um, where you can eat and relax, etc. Um, guys, that's about it from me. Thanks for listening. Uh, if anyone's got any questions, uh, fire away. Same as before, how many students are in a class? How long is a full day and is it every day? OK, uh, it's pretty similar to Karma. The course uh, the next year is going to be running Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So it's a three day week. Um, we start about nine o'clock. We finish around four. Class sizes vary, but at the moment we've got quite a nice number. Um, probably around sort of 15. But um, we have several different rehearsal rooms, uh, different places, so you'll always be put into smaller groups to work. If following Karma's and Barney's presentation, um, you would like to make an application with us, please visit southdevon.ac.uk, enter the name of your chosen subject into the search box. Then you can navigate to your chosen course, check the details of the course, make sure it matches your career goals and aspirations, and then click apply now on the top right of the page to create an account with us. Following application, you will receive a phone call from your tutor to the number you gave us. This is to discuss your course choice and receive a conditional offer based on grades. If you would like guidance following this call, please inform a tutor during the call and our level six qualified information advice and guidance team will phone you to follow up. Following results day, if your grades are not what you expect, our guidance team will be on hand to find the right course for you. This may include a different level course for your chosen subject, but please remember you can always change your course choice before you enrol at the end of August. To do so or to arrange an interview with us, please email at inquiries at southdevon.ac.uk or alternatively call us on 08000 380 123. At South Devon College, we take our responsibility to support your learning very seriously. This is why we have a dedicated learning support team, which offers a range of services to support your learning, including study skill support, additional maths and English support, the Lodge, which is a provision at our painting campus for learners with a diagnosis of autistic spectrum condition. We also have British Sign Language communicators, specialist equipment, dyslexia based packages and tailored programmes of study, including specific tutorial time. Should you have any questions about support, please don't hesitate to contact us by emailing support at southdevon.ac.uk. We also have a positive intervention team at the college, which is a team of people that offers emotional and pastoral support to help learners achieve their potential, stay on course and develop personal and social skills in preparation for employment or further education. We work hard to support personal welfare and well-being at the college and can put you in contact with other supporting agencies if required. For any inquiries regarding positive intervention, please email piadmin at southdevon.ac.uk. You may be eligible for a bursary with us if you live in a household with an earned income of under £25,000 before tax. 
We offer a range of supports for, uh, for the bursary, including course equipment, uniform, DBS checks, meals, tuition fees, childcare and travel. For those with a household income of between £21,000 and £25,000, you will receive travel support in form of a free bus pass. And for those with household income under £21,000, you may be eligible for, eligible for both for travel support and our bursary, depending on the course and your individual circumstances. Bursary applications will be open on our website from the 25th of May. In order to apply for this after the 25th of May, please visit southdevon.ac.uk, scroll down on our front page and click on the link for bursary support. Then once on that page, click on the top link which says click here to apply for your bursary. Please create an account, upload the photos of your household income and submit your application from there. For financial support for adults, if you're age 19 or over and you want to study a level three to six vocational qualification with us, you'll need to pay for the cost of your course. The Advanced Learner Loan is a government funded loan to help these learners. It's easy to apply for, doesn't take your household income into account and doesn't involve a credit check. It works very similarly to student loans in that repayments are linked to what you earn and not how much you've borrowed. You only have to start making repayments when you finish your course and you're earning over 25,000 £725. Until then, you don't need to pay anything back. You can make voluntary repayments at any time. Should you take your studies on to university and achieve a higher education course related to your level three to six vocational course, Student Finance England will write off any outstanding balances you owe. This means you do not have to repay it. If you do not receive a bus pass via bursary, you can also purchase one for us with our partnership with Stagecoach. We offer a Day Rider Travel Pass, which covers the Torbay area, plus Dartmouth, Kingswear, Totnes, Newton Abbott, Timoth and Dornish, and an Explorer Travel Pass, which covers all those areas, plus South Brent, Ivy Bridge, Plymouth, Chudley, Ashburton, Bubby Tracy, Buckfastley, and Exeter. We're currently finalising prices for this year, but as a guide, last year our Day Rider Travel Pass was £300 for the year, and our Explorer Travel Pass was £400. This can also be split into term payments. In order to apply for the bus pass after the 25th of May, please visit our website at southdevon.ac.uk, scroll down on the front page and click on travel support. Then you'll find a link for the SDC travel pass application form, which will give you instructions on how to complete the form and send it back to us at funding at southdevon.ac.uk. We've also been asked when it'd be possible to come and see the college. We'll keep you up to date with this by email once we know more. Um, we're waiting for information on the government about when this will be possible. If you have any further inquiries about your application or about South Devon College in general, please don't hesitate, hesitate to contact us on inquiries at southdevon.ac.uk or phone us on 08000 380 123. We look forward to seeing you at South Devon College.